Welcome to EcoElectric's uh, SMA 5000 TL special. What we're staring at right here is a 5 kilowatt inverter. It's got about 7 kilowatts of panels running into it. Time's about 10 a.m. and uh, we have a, a small amount of shading on the roof but not a great deal. Down here, a couple of DC circuit breakers, thereby giving us string protection and isolation means within one device. These are the NOARCs. Uh, we're actually supplying and recommending ABB's DC isolators now. However, the NOARCs are certainly a great device as well. Um, so, the Sunny Boy. Sunny Boy comes with its own isolator straight out of the box. Unfortunately, Australian standards uh, deem that those isolators must be separate to the unit, hence the additional ones on the wall. And the unit also has an AC output, which feeds into our switchboard on A phase, and thereby either is used with our own consumption, which it generally is here, or fed out to the grid. So if we have a look at the Sunny Boys display, the green light over here obviously indicates that the inverter is running. Uh, below that you have a technical error light, uh, and the third light at the bottom is a Bluetooth connection light. Uh, SMA Sunny Boys come with Bluetooth as standard, uh, which you can use to log uh, your inverter output to your computer. You see on the screen here that it has a graph, this graph shows the production over time and the output in kilowatts. Today it's showing a, a peak of 5 kilowatts, which is the maximum amount of power that was produced uh, in the middle of the day. And you can see here that we've had some shading or clouding issues as the day has progressed. To the right of that we have power in real time. Now a lot of people get very caught up in this reading and they want to see it peak at the maximum rating of the inverter which is 5000 watts but in reality it's very unlikely that you will see your inverter reach peak due to numerous losses uh, and design factors uh, which are outlined in a blog on our website uh, but the short story is that Inverters, due to those losses, will generally run below that peak unless you have installed an overclocked amount of panels on your roof. This particular unit has 7 kilowatts running into it, so it is quite normal for us to see us running, it, uh, running at 5 kilowatts. Uh, but right now, it's running at 2.5 or thereabouts. Uh, below that it gives the total for the day, 34.9 kilowatts, so it's been a pretty good day here, we've done a lot of production, we would have exported some and no doubt used a lot, and below that it has the total for all time, uh, some 16 megawatts which have been produced here over the last three years or so I believe. Uh, now down the bottom it gets a bit technical, so this is what we call a dual tracking inverter. It's capable of taking panels in two directions at two pitches. Now this is indicated here by the shaded panels and you'll notice that it flicks between the two. So when it's on this side it is giving out channel 1 and when it flicks to the second side it is reading out channel 2. As it passes between channels, this side of the inverter gives your DC voltage and your DC amps on the roof. So you can see that we have two different string configurations on this roof and that's why our readings are different. For most homeowners it's likely that your system is balanced and you'll find that these readings are very similar. So you have DC volts and DC amps. This picture here represents the inverter itself, the isolator heading out to the grid, 
And then over this side we have AC volts and AC amps. And then over here we head off to the grid. The most important thing when reading any type of inverter is your daily production and your kilowatt hours for all time. Uh, any system which has been sold to you by a reputable company will come with a design statement showing what the inverter will do in terms of daily production month by month and an average for the year. So the easiest way for you to check if your inverter is working properly is to check this daily production. You can also check it over all time by taking this figure and dividing it by the number of days installed and that should roughly match your average production figure on your design estimate. Now when I say roughly, I mean within one kilowatt or so, either side. Uh, design factors these days are fairly exact, so you should find that that figure is within one kilowatt or an absolute maximum of around 10%. Now, we'll just show you a shutdown procedure for this unit. You can shut down an SMA by using the inbuilt isolator here and simply pull down or you can use the DC circuit breakers or isolators which would be installed next to your unit. Now the inverter is powered off DC, it runs off the solar which is why they switch off at night, but it also carries a DC load. Now DC electricity has a tendency to really arc which means that you should never turn it off before killing the load. As you can see we have some two and a half thousand watts here which is close to 10 amps or 10 amps. Uh, so the safest thing to do is to, as per the shutdown procedure, turn off the solar supply main switch located in the switchboard and then turn off your DC. So we will turn that off here and head back to our unit and you will notice that it is now flashing in standby mode and that grid voltage is now disappearing. You can also see that we still have DC volts but there is no DC amps which means that the unit cannot arc. So we can now shut the unit down using the DC isolators and you will note that the unit does remain powered for a few seconds possibly up to 30 and it just flashes its last readings uh, but there is now no DC power and no AC power to the unit so it will shortly uh, switch to a blank screen which indicates that it is completely 100% off. Thanks for watching, we'll follow this up with some videos on how to check an ABB Aurora uh, and also a SAML which are two of our most popular units uh, and we'll go from there have a good day. Thank you.